Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I just found a spider in this room and then on my way to take him outside because I can't squish bugs. I found a daddy long leg as well, but otherwise I'm good. And I am very excited for this video. One, because I'm gonna show you how to make this adorable washi tape desk organizer. Two, because I'm having a surprise giveaway. If you win, you're going to receive a light blue Polaroid camera, this really cute notebook, these scented fruit-shaped magnetic bookmarks, some dry erase markers and pens, a couple packs of holographic pencils and colorful ones, along with these pretty pencils that have inspirational quotes on them, some crayon-shaped erasers, this notepad that is shaped like a crayon box, as well as this really cute pink cassette tape notepad, this pack of colorful ballpoint pens, and last but not least, these adorable bunny stickers. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed to this channel, So Craftastic, and also be following me on either Twitter, Instagram, or both of them. And then what you're going to do is leave a comment below, which includes either your Twitter or Instagram name. Also include a Netflix show recommendation and say that you're entering, and this is just so YouTube doesn't mark the comments as spam. The giveaway is international, so any of you can enter, but if you are under 18, then please have permission from a parent or guardian to enter. This last thing isn't going to affect your odds of winning, but if you do enjoy this video, pretty please give the video a thumbs up so the video hopefully gets spread around YouTube a little bit more and recommended. Now, without further ado, let's get into the DIY. Good luck, everyone. To make this desk organizer, I am using two empty cereal boxes, and I'm going to be using various colors, patterns, and widths of washi tape. Start out with one of your cereal boxes and draw a diagonal line on the side. Here I'm making one dot about one and a half inches down from the top of the box, and then on the other side I am going to make the dot just at the very top. Then draw a diagonal line connecting the two dots. Don't pay too much attention to the measurements because it's going to vary based upon how you want your organizer to look and what you want to put inside. I actually did change this later on, but you'll see that soon. Once you get the first side done, flip it over to the other side and you're going to repeat that exact same measurement. You want the lower dot to be at the front of the box and the higher dot to be near the back. So again, I just connected those dots together with a Sharpie. You can use a pen or pencil if you don't have a Sharpie or don't want to use a Sharpie. And then you're going to just extend that line across the entire front, connecting the two lowest dots on the sides. Now I have a line going all the way across the front of the box and extending out the two sides. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut along that line all the way around. And for the back, that means I'm just going to be cutting off the flap or tab at the top of the box here. Using that inch and a half measurement was actually a very bad idea. I should have put the magazines in first to measure like where they would need to be, where I would need to cut the box because the magazines actually did sink all the way down and you can't see them. I don't like this look, so I went ahead and trimmed off a little bit more. I think my measurement was now like two and a half or three inches down, but like I said, it's going to depend on your specific design, what you want to put inside and how far you want that item or items to hang over the top. But anyway, you saw that I just drew a line around again the exact same way and trim that off. Now my magazines fit nicely. I like this look a lot better. Now that the first box is all cut, I'm going to do the same thing with the second box, but I'm going to trim off a lot more so this box can be further down on the first one. So here's what it looks like now that I've trimmed around the line and I'm going to work on joining them together. Before I do that, I'm actually going to sand down the boxes a little bit because they are shiny and they have a very smooth texture. So I'm going to remove some of that shine and make them more rough so glue will stick better and they will just end up being more secure and stable after the project is complete. Sometimes glue, depending on which kind you use, does not like shiny surfaces and over time the two pieces can rip apart. So that is why I'm doing the sanding but if you wanna skip this part, it's totally up to you. Once the sanding is complete, go ahead and take a slightly damp napkin or paper towel and just wipe off all the powder. It wouldn't be a bad idea for this if you used one of those little white painting masks and did this by an open window because there is a lot of dust. I didn't do that, but I definitely do recommend it if you're doing a lot of boxes because you could breathe in the powder and it's probably not very good for you to do that. And I also recommend putting something down on your work surface because it does get all over and make kind of a mess. 
The next step is to cover most of the sides of the boxes. You'll see what I mean. But here I traced the sides and the front of this tricks box onto white pieces of cardstock. And I did the same for the other box as well. I was able to trace all of my shapes onto four sheets of paper, but it will vary for you if you've used different measurements. Once I have all the shapes cut out of the pieces of cardstock and they are the exact same size as the respective areas on the boxes, I'm going to one at a time Mod Podge them onto the box and cover up the design. I'm doing this for two main reasons. One is to make the organizer as a whole more stable and sturdy. Putting on more layers of paper is going to make the finished product a lot stronger. And two, washi tape is rather see-through and most cereal boxes have a very bold pattern on them so it won't look very nice and neat if you can see the tricks through the tape or whatever cereal box you're using. With a sponge brush you can see I just applied a thin layer of Mod Podge to the box and then I stuck the paper on and that's all you have to do. Don't worry about brushing Mod Podge on the front of the paper at all or the washi tape might not stick. And you can see that I didn't cover the very bottom of my first box or the back of the second box where they are attaching. If you want to cover those parts of the boxes with paper, you can, but you definitely don't have to. Once you have all the sides covered that you want covered, then you can join the two boxes together by Mod Podging the front of the first box and the back of the second box and putting those together and hold them for a while so they do dry flat and are stuck completely together. Now all the sides of the boxes are covered with paper, but on the sides, when I put the tape on, if you can notice, you can see that crease that goes down the center where the two boxes join. So in order to get rid of this and disguise it, I'm actually going to cut another piece of paper that is the same shape as the two side panels joined together, if that makes sense. So I just traced around the side again, and I added this odd shaped piece to each side to hide that line that goes down the center. And to cover up the brown on the inside of the boxes, I decided to use white acrylic paint and you want to do at least two coats so it looks even and you can't see any of the brown through. And for this, you don't have to worry about going all the way down in the box. That would be kind of annoying and you would need a longer paintbrush for this. Just get as much as you can that's going to be visible when you have the boxes just sitting upright and you're looking at them eye level. Now it is time to add washi tape and this is my favorite part because this is how you can make it totally unique and customize it to your style. There are so many different colors and patterns of washi tape available, and this is really going to bring your organizer to life and you can match it to your home decor or room decor or office decor. And I'm just really excited for this part if you can't tell, especially since I have glitter washi tape and glitter makes everything better. There are a couple different types of washi tape and by that I mean that some have an extra sticky like a sticker sheet on the back that you have to peel off and others are just like regular tape and you just stick them down right off the roll either way is fairly easy so don't worry about which kind you have you can use as many or as few colors and patterns as you want you could do all one or you could do 10 or 20 if you want but basically just wrap the tape around the entire box as straight as you possibly can and create strips all the way around for each one i overlapped it just slightly kind of like a hairline thickness so you wouldn't see any of the white of the paper through and i made sure that the seam was on the back of the box every time so that wouldn't be visible by the way, a couple summers ago, I did a different version of a desk organizer that has a lot more compartments. So if you wanna see that one, go ahead and check out this video in the description box below or in the I button in the corner. If you don't wanna use washi tape or you don't have washi tape, you could just cover the boxes with colorful scrapbook paper or cardstock. You could even use the decoupage process with Mod Podge to apply a bunch of colorful magazine cutouts or computer printouts or you could use duct tape and if you do use duct tape you don't have to worry about covering the boxes with that white piece of paper if you are short on time at this point you can see i finished my first three strips of washi tape around and not gonna lie it actually looks really good at this point and if you want to do a very simplistic design like this it definitely looks finished but i want to go all out and cover the entire thing with washi so that's what i did here is what my organizer looks like now and the final step that i'm going to do is just trim 
these little excess pieces off along the diagonal parts of the boxes. You could fold those down if you wanted to, but you'd have to put a lot of care into making sure that the edges line up on the inside so it doesn't look messy. I decided to stick with kind of a mint green, white, gold, and pinky color scheme and a little bit of yellow thrown in there as well. That's it, now your desk organizer is ready to use and you can put it on a desk, of course, a bookshelf or if your locker is huge if you're somehow that lucky you could use it at school you can use this for magazines books sketch pads little notebooks markers rulers whatever you need to store i'm so happy with the way that this turned out thank you all so much for watching and remember if you enjoyed to give it a big thumbs up i'm gonna list a couple awesome videos of mine over here so if you haven't seen them give them a click and check them out also Wreck This Journal is coming back in just a few days, episode number 13. I'm also going to be giving away a Wreck This Journal in that video, so stay tuned, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye!